Hello again, it's Paul. And in today's video, we'll be assembling the components for building a custom gaming computer. Now in our last video, we went through how to select the components for your custom gaming computer, especially if you're shopping on a budget. While every custom gaming build is different, there are some similarities, and the first being, take your time. Don't rush. Yes, you're probably very excited to be assembling your computer if it's just arrived, but take your time. By taking your time, you'll ensure you don't have to do things twice, make mistakes, and this will ensure you'll have an amazing build. Before starting your assembly, consider what tools you require. Now, in most cases, it will be a Phillips head screwdriver. When assembling your computer, you may also want to do it on a surface which may not conduct any static electricity. So don't do it on a mat, don't do it on a rug. And if you want to take it up an extra level, you can get static free gloves, which will reduce the amount of oil and the risk of uh, electromagnetic shock or static ruining your parts, and possibly either a static band for your system, desk, and yourself. Many of you may think that static electricity really isn't a big issue, but it can be. And I also encourage you to spend an extra $20 just to get a surge protector. So once you've got your tools, it's then time to prepare your build. Today, we'll be preparing the case first, installing additional fans, hard drives, and following that, we'll then be seating the CPU and the motherboard. And following that, we'll then install the CPU water cooler. Now, the CPU water cooler installation and CPU will be installed on the motherboard outside the case. Once we've prepared all that on the motherboard, we then insert that in the case and can start to put in our other peripherals, such as our graphics card, power supply, and LED light strips. Okay, let's clear the desk. Okay, that's much cleaner. Now, we're gonna start by preparing the cases mentioned and we're gonna be installing the fans. First thing we need to do is, of course, open up the boxes. Take your time. Be sure you've got a container there to put all your screws and nuts and fittings. There should be some that come with the case. As mentioned, this is the Thermal Tank View 27. It costs under 100 Australian dollars, and it's fantastic value for money. It's got this beautiful curved front section with the window there to show off your build. Ensure when you're taking off your panels, you put the panels facing up so that you don't scratch any of the exterior surface. You'd hate to do that to your new build. Put it on somewhere soft. Okay, we've got our set of fittings there for the case. Now this is the case here, as you can see, it can fit either a micro ATX, mini ATX, or foot size ATX motherboard. So it is a fairly versatile case. It's got a number of hot swappable ports here at the back. Furthermore, it's got room for four 120 millimeter fans. You can have your custom water cooling set up here as well, which you'll see in the thermal tank image. Let's get started. So the fans we'll be installing are ID Cooling's CF120. Not too sure about their reliability, but I normally prefer Noctua. However, these are considerably cheaper and they do have a beautiful red LED, which will look fantastic on the case. When you're installing your components, such as fans, I like to use these uh, grommets here, these rubber grommets, they reduce the amount of vibration and noise that may come from the fans. However, with these ID cooling ones, they actually have small little rubber stoppers there, which, which appear to provide a significant amount of, uh, of cushioning. You want to try and feed your wires in through the back of your case so that no one can see them and try and pair them all up. You've normally got cable ties and other things which will come along with different parts of the packages and you can use those until you find the correct route that you'll end up fixing your cables to. I guess while we have the case here, we can also install the power supply because it seems to be out of the way. Like Corsair, they're a great brand for RAM in cases. While a bit more expensive, you are paying for quality. Now you want to have your the cooling for your power supply facing down or wherever the ventilation is. On this case, there is a filter underneath. You want filters on your case to reduce the amount of cleaning that you've got to do the fans. And the lovely thing about this case, as mentioned, is it keeps it all neatly out of the way. The last thing we can do is probably install the hard drive now. I have a laptop hard drive here that I've got to spare and that's just gonna be inserted in the back here. Boom, right there. 
just like so. Okay, with the hard drive in, we can now move on to inserting the CPU into the motherboard. Let's open up our motherboard. As mentioned, I was able to pick up the MSI B250M Gaming with a mouse. So that's a fantastic deal. Got our cables, instructions, drivers, and everything else that we need, warranty information, just in case something occurs underneath. This portion of the video will be keeping the motherboard in the box for the time being. Okay, so we take the motherboard out of the box extremely carefully. The reason why I'm wearing the glove is so I don't get any of my uh, hand oils on the motherboard. Also, it can reduce the uh, risk of static electricity damaging the board. So in this project, we're going to be using the Pentium G560, and it's an LGA 1151 socket to match the motherboard. So as we look at the motherboard, we should be able to see the battery, the graphics card slot, the RAM slots, the power, and this side here will be facing the external part of the, uh, the case. Now, as mentioned, this is the uh, protective cover here. We'll be opening up and moving to the side, and that will bring up everything that we need there. You want to be extremely careful with these pins, do not damage them. Uh, you'll notice on one corner back here, there'll be a mark where you actually point the CPU, so it's right there. You can see that mark, you line the CPU up with that triangle there. Once the CPU is seated, you can then close the brace. And voila. With your CPU seated, we can now put the water cooling onto the motherboard. Prior to actually fitting the water cooling unit, we want to roughly estimate where and how it's going to sit in the case. When installing your all-in-one water cooler, ensure that your radiator is fed from the top. This reduces the amount of work your pump has to do, so when fitting this particular water cooling, we'll be applying the back plate first. So you'll be able to find where to actually put the screws through on the instruction manual, and it'll tell you which socket, as every socket will have a slightly different fit. We're just going to loosely tighten all the screws on there, before going round in an opposing order and giving them a finishing tightening, uh, a final tightening. So you want to tighten up opposing corners. So we want to ensure that your CPU surface is, is clean, isopropic alcohol to clean it, and of course a static free cloth. And this will ensure efficient heat transfer between the CPU core and the CPU. And that's the whole reason for it. We want to keep these components nice and cool to ensure they have a lovely long lifespan. When applying thermal paste, a common misconception is to either use the whole container or to use too much. You want just a little fingernails worth. So as you can see, I've almost applied a little too much thermal paste. We're going to give it a little spread around to ensure that it's uh, evenly distributed. Some packs come with a nice little spatula that you can spread it around and ensure that it's going to cover the whole CPU. And we don't want it spilling over the edges because that's going to make a mess. So now we're ready to put the water pump on. Once again, as we use the fixtures and fittings, we're not going to screw them down 100% tight or completely tight. We're just going to do it so it's held on. Then we're going to go around and tighten everything off in a diagonal manner, as if you were doing up a car tire. All right, before we continue, it's important to give yourself plenty of breaks and keep your work area nice and clear. So we're just going to tidy up. <laughs> And we're going to hold on to the fittings and fixtures for when we decide to upgrade our computer at a later date. Let's get it! Uh, let's get it! Uh. We're now going to install the motherboard and water cooler into the case. Now for installing the motherboard, you may choose to lie the case flat. Uh, this will enable you to reduce the amount of strain on the uh, water cooling and also just ensure everything is lined up properly. If you do decide to flip your case over, just make sure all your cables are neatly tucked away so you don't crush anything. Also, make sure you've got a clean workspace. Try to install your motherboard. You want to put in the connection plate. Next, we're going to mount the radiator onto the case. Next, we're going to install the RAM. With the RAM installed, we can now install the graphics card. 
With all our components assembled, it's now time to connect everything. While it's important to make everything look clean and nice at the front, having good cable management is very important as it helps you with upgrades and also should you have any issues in the future, say a hard drive or power supply goes, you can easily and quickly swap them out. Here's a couple of tips. So you'll notice here with the cables at the back, I've tried to align them along the panels here where they have areas where you can tie them. Now while most people prefer cable ties, I prefer either Velcro or these little bendy twisty things which often come around the cables and with all the packaging and whatnot that you receive with all your components. These are great because you can easily add more cables and remove them as opposed to a cable tie which you'll need to cut and replace every single time. Once you've started to reassemble your case, you can then put in your additional extras. So I've got here an LED strip and I'm just going to line the edge of the case with the LED strip. It has these fixtures which I can apply and you should probably clean the surface first with isopropyl alcohol. Okay, with everything reassembled, before we install the operating system, we'd like to undertake a stress test. Now you can do this in a number of ways, there's a number of online tools. Personally, I like to use a live Linux disk and give the computer a run through its paces to ensure that the computer stays cool. I like to stress test for approximately 24 hours. Okay, once that's done, you can then prepare to install your operating system. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching. In our next video, we'll be installing the operating system and the software required for RF LAN 60. We'll also be preparing all the accessories and requirements that you need for a cyber athletics tournament or a LAN party. Once again, this is Paulie. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Have a lag-free gaming experience.